So I was asked to do another scanning basics video. Here we are, scanning 102. Let's get started. Number one, you want to, whenever you grab a probe and you're putting it on the patient, you want to find a good scanning window. So by scanning window, I mean, where can you see a clear image of the organ you are visualizing? And you want to find the best one. A patient can have multiple windows through which you can see the organ that you are visualizing. But there might be rib shadowing in one. There might be bowel gas in one. You want to find the best scanning window. And one of my previous preceptors, the one who I'll always reference, he said that, okay, you're making a lot of macro movements when you're trying to take each image. Do your macro movements to find the good window, for example, with the liver. And then within that window, make micro movements. You make small adjustments. So scan around, find where you can see the clearest image. And then within that, take the majority of your images in that small window. Number two, once you're in that window, you want to use as much pressure as medically necessary. This is another thing he taught me. So for example, with the ovaries, this is the instance where he told me, I was always scared to apply more pressure. And yes, it can be uncomfortable for the patient, but unless they refuse and they say stop, then you can apply more pressure. Sometimes you need to apply more pressure to get a clearer image, especially for certain patients. Like if the patient is a first trimester OB patient, you have to clear out that ovary and make sure that there is no extra uterine pregnancy hanging off that ovary. So as long as it's medically necessary, apply more pressure. When it's not necessary for you to be applying all that pressure, don't, don't be squeezing the life out of these folks. I have seen that happen. It's not nice. So you can miss things by not applying enough pressure. So use as much pressure as you need to, and you need to get the transducer as close to the organ you are visualizing as possible. That is going to give you the best image. Number three, the third scanning basic I will discuss today is if you don't image it, it doesn't exist. Remember, we are the physician's eyes. If we don't take an image of it, they have no way of documenting that abnormality was seen. You can't say, oh, well, I saw it. So I'm just going to write it down in my interpretation. Because, I, I mean, I saw it. I just forgot to take an image of it. It doesn't matter when it comes down to it and your images are being reviewed. Unfortunately, sometimes I try to get into that mindset that it's okay I, that I didn't take that picture. You got to take the picture. Because our job, when we see an abnormality, is to prove. Your images are proof. We are proving that this is what we see because it meets this, this, and this requirement. So this is why I feel like this patient has this abnormality, because sometimes you do have to advocate for your patients. For example, like with cystic structures that I mentioned in the scanning 101 video, your job is when you see a cyst, it's not just, okay, let me just quick take a picture. No, is it anechoic? Is there posterior acoustic enhancement? Is the cyst free of debris? These are the things that you want to be proving. Is there internal vasculature? When you put the color box on, that is what you are proving. Every single image, you are proving something. You just think, I'm taking a quick image of the liver. No, you're not. You're taking an image and you're proving that, for example, there is no thrombus within the liver veins. You are proving that the liver is isoechoic from from anterior to posterior. Every single image, there is a reason why you are taking every single image. And you need to keep that in mind whenever you are scanning. Next, number four. I'm going to have one more after this. Number four is don't maintain the status quo when you are scanning. So that means that if the previous sonographer said, oh, this patient has this abnormality, you're not going in and assuming that well, because this other sonographer said this, that this abnormality is this way, that's what I'm going to write on my report as well. No, it doesn't matter if the patient had another type of test, a different imaging modality that said a certain thing. You are going in with your eyes and looking at the images and seeing what you see and proving what you see. 
You cannot rely on other things. And not even necessarily the radiologist report because the radiologists are humans. They do not always document everything accurately. I've had some incidents where I was pretty sure an organ was abnormal. And then multiple occasions with one radiologist, he would say, no, no, I don't see that. No, no, no. Another sonographer, she reassured me like, no, don't listen to him. <laughs> Keep on doing what you're doing. So you don't need to always rely so heavily on others' interpretations. You want to, a lot of times, look at the images yourself, look at the CT, look at the MRI yourself, the actual images yourself, once you learn what to look for. And this even applies when you are in school, not when you're just a graduate sonographer. If you think that something someone told you is not right when you go in and scan the patient. So I kind of spoke up a little bit when I was in school. I was going in to perform, I believe, a right upper quadrant on a patient. And a sonographer told me, oh, the CT said that there are pancreatic calcifications, meaning that the t pancreatic tissue itself was calcified, hardened. And I said, okay. So I go in, I scan, I take a bunch of images. I take some really good images of the pancreas, might I add. I go back and talk to that same sonographer. I tell her, I think those are actual pancreatic duct stones. And she's like, no, that, that's not likely. That's not possible. She goes and scans and says, I, I think you're right. So you don't have to have RDMS by your name to have your own opinion. And if you can approve that, because I proved that within my images, I clearly demonstrated the ducts and the stones causing shadowing within the pancreas. You can speak up. So yes, don't just agree with everything the other person says and said and copy what a previous sonographer wrote in their interpretation into yours. You have to go into each exam with fresh eyes. That's even when an indication on an exam order says rule out this or I'm su su suspecting this abnormality or something. You have to think with fresh eyes, look with open eyes. And lastly, number five, understand the limitations of ultrasound. That's the scanning basic that you need to know. Accepting that there's only so much you can do, that's very important. Very key as a sonographer. There are certain things, overlying bowel gas, patient body habits, and that does not always mean that the patient is large. Sometimes certain people's anatomy is just not ultrasound friendly at all. And they can be very slim. And I'm like, what are you eating? Why does your anatomy look like that? I understand that you putting in more time, more and more and more time trying to see the organ or, or this is not going to improve the appearance of the anatomy. With certain limitations, there's only so much you can do. So don't spin your wheels spending twice the amount of time on a, an exam when it's just not getting any better. Stick to the protocol, take the images that you need, and on the things that you can't say, put such and such pancreas area, go right ovary area. Just keep on pushing, keep on going with your protocol. After you have spent sufficient time scanning and looking for something, you have to, I don't want to say give up, but you have to accept that you can't do anymore and move on. So those are five more of my scanning basics, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you progress in your program, you might want to take advantage of my ultrasound tutorial videos. As always, I will have more of my resources listed in the description box, and I'll see you in the next video.